Welcome to Beyond the Badge. Beyond the Badge is an inside look at your Oshkosh Police Department, brought to you through the resources of Oshkosh Community Media Services. Welcome to this edition of Beyond the Badge. I'm Joe Nichols. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. On today's show, we'll be talking with Nicole Tynan, who is the anti-trafficking advocate for the REACH Counseling Services. Later in the show, we'll be talking with Mary Ann Radley, who's the Sexual Assault Victim Advocate with REACH Counseling Services. We thank all of you watching us today on City Cable 10 and those of you listening to us on 101.9 WOCT. Nicole, welcome to the show. Hi. I know it's your first time on the show, okay. and uh, our viewers and listeners would like to know just a little bit about you, so go ahead. Yeah, um, well, I'm 28. I'm from the Appleton area. Um, I grew up here. Um, I'm actually um, a survivor of human trafficking myself. Um, and I now work with REACH Counseling to help women exit the industry and exit exploitation. Well, fantastic, and thank you again for coming on today's show. Thank you. And as we begin, uh, the anti-trafficking advocate position is new. Please tell us about the position a little bit. Yeah, um, well, I started this, um, this program um, in, in January, mm -hmm. um, and what we do is we provide systems advocacy, which is um, changing the views um, within the police departments, within um, the shelters around here, to um, help them understand what trafficking is. Um, and the other part of my job is to work with women. Um, when a woman is arrested for prostitution, um, I'm called to come and talk with her and offer her different options because many of these women feel like there is no option. Okay, and you mentioned trafficking. What is it? Yeah, trafficking is um, when, trafficking is prostitution. Um, okay. Prostitution for so long has been um, described as a victimless crime, as a crime that, um, or, you know, as, I'm sorry, um, they, um, it looks like when a pimp um, has control over a, another individual by force, coercion, um, or fraud, and they use a, um, a woman or a male's vulnerability to gain control of them and exploit them through sexual exploitation. Um, and so it can look like a lot of different things. It can look like um, a gorilla type pimp who is one who, you know, forcefully beats on them and uses um, intimidation and fear to control their victim. A, a CEO pimp is someone who makes it more like a business. He presents it like we're working together to build a better life and, you know, we're going to buy a bar one day and we're all going to run it. And, um, and they also use um, fear and intimidation, but it's more of this family sense of this we're growing together type of um, relationship. And then we have what's called a Romeo pimp who looks like a boyfriend. Um, the woman will describe him as a boyfriend. She will um, thinks really that he is her boyfriend, um, and he uses the vulnerability of needing love, of wanting to feel needed, um, you know, paying attention to her, you know, those type of things. And he th she thinks that that's what love is, and that that they're in this together, and, and those types of things. And so, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what trafficking looks Very like. Good. Very good. Okay. Um, how are individuals recruited, uh, you know, into a life of sex, uh, sex trafficking? Um, now, it can, it can look, like I said, several different ways, too. Um, and most girls are recruited in when they're 13. 13 is the average age of entering into prostitution wow. um, and trafficking. And so, um, 
as any 13 year old, you know, they're vulnerable. <laughs> they have mm -hmm. many vulnerabilities. And um, so, and recruitment kind of starts at home, actually. 95% of women in the sex industry were sexually exploited, um, sexually abused as children before the age of 18. Um, if we talk about what the gateway is, the gateway drug, you know, <laughs> the gateway into trafficking is being abused as a child. Um, and pimps, recognize that they know that they look for that they look for a girl who is on the internet who is um you know telling too much of herself or posting inappropriate pictures you know can, they can sense those things of a girl who is vulnerable and then they exploit that they go in and they attack and it, sometimes it takes months to groom a girl um to get her to to trust uh, the, the perpetrator and once he's gained that trust or put enough fear in her then you know she's out there selling her body for money well, uh, why do people stay you know in the life of sex, uh, sex trafficking um, I would say one of the main reasons is shame once you for that first time sold your body for money you leave feeling damaged you feel um, dirty you feel you know you don't want anybody to know and and you know in that it's you know they're very embarrassed by by those things and so some will go to the defense of saying I like it because it's a front for their own mind for their own um, protection they f they need to feel like I I own this it's something I want to do mm -hmm. um, so that they can survive every day doing that you know um, and then you know the fear the fear of that the what these perpetrators do to these women is is um, is unbelievable the amount of rapes the amount of sodomizing the beatings the you know the fear of if you have children um, what will you do to them what will you do to my family and they threaten everything around you um, so it makes it in, in in the process you are isolated and so a pimp will probably move you from town to town to town to take you and um, and so you don't have uh, any type of other life you know mm -hmm. this is the only life you know um, and so it makes it very hard to leave all right well and w I guess you know what are some of the red flags uh, you know that are out there somebody might notice uh, in regards to uh, the sex trafficking yeah um, if we're talking about red flags for people entering and who is sure. vulnerable to enter trafficking, mm -hmm. um, that would look more like a, a girl who is, you know, in her teens, who maybe has a boyfriend who's very overprotective. She doesn't know any boundaries, um, sexually acting out, maybe dressing, you know, certain ways. Um, you know, those would be key things to, to look for. Um, from red flags of somebody who's already in mm -hmm. and you want to recognize that, um, somebody who know, doesn't look you in the eye at all, okay. um, who seems very controlled by an outside source, um, receiving lots of text messages, phone calls, doesn't seem to have any control, can't make any decisions of their own. They need to refer to somebody else or they need to think, it just seems like they're not, they can't um, make any decisions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's very interesting, though, because there, there there are two sides to it: one entering and one that's already in. Yeah. So, so how can people keep themselves safe uh, from this type of uh, activity? Yeah, for the the teens out there, I would say always let somebody know where you are. Make sure that you are safe. The I know the parents out there feel uh, you may feel your parents are overprotective, or you know you want to be free. But the best thing you can do to keep yourself safe is letting people know who, what you are doing and who you are doing it with. And if you are doing those two things, you are keeping yourself safe. Absolutely. How about where, where can parents turn to if, if they get this information? You know? If they feel their yeah. child is um, um, yeah. entering into that, I would say reach out um, to get some help. I would call Reach Counseling Services or Sexual Assault Crisis Center. I would reach out. Um, to counselors to you know and be on top of your child ask them where they're going who they're with and sure. you know and don't be afraid to be all up in their business um, absolutely be involved yes absolutely <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what services are available for the, those in sex trafficking um, yeah right now we have an advocacy program being built and so 
um, they are able to get into a safe house, into not a safe house specifically for trafficking, but we have some safe um, places to, that they could go. Um, and then we begin to work on goals. Um, so I can help them with services in the community already there. And we just work on building self-esteem and um, independent, independent skills. Very good, very good. And what is currently being done to address the sex trafficking in our area? Um, that is what we are doing right now. Okay. We are working on, um, we are right now pulling out some women. Um, we're getting calls from the police station of girls who have been, um, who are arrested for prostitution. Mm -hmm. And I go and speak with the woman and offer her some options. Um, and, and, and we look at the pros and the cons of that. So what are the benefits and consequences if you were to stay in the life? Because there are some. What are the benefits and consequences if you leave the life and work with law enforcement? Or what if you leave but don't work in law enforcement? Because there's, there's a different consequences and benefits to those three different choices. And um, usually when a girl is presented with that, she's able to look at it like, wow, I have a choice. And mm -hmm. they are choosing to leave. Very good. And Nicole, if someone wanted to contact uh, REACH or you, how would they do that? Yeah, um, they can call REACH Counseling at 920-722-8150. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much, for uh, Nicole, for being on today's show and giving this, uh, us this very important information. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll be right back after this short break. Hello, I'm City Manager Mark Roloff. Roundabouts are new to many of us in Oshkosh, so we have to take extra precaution when using them. Remember, safety is the key. Slow down. The speed limit in the roundabout is only 15 miles an hour. Avoid distractions. Focus all your attention on navigating the roundabout. Find the proper lane. Check out the signage leading up to the roundabout. Choose your lane assignment early and stay in your lane. Evaluate the situation. Take notice of what kind of vehicles are in front of you. Sometimes larger trucks need to take up both lanes of a roundabout. Think to look for pedestrians and allow them to cross when entering and exiting a roundabout. Yield to traffic on your left. You must yield to all traffic in the roundabout and that traffic will be coming from your left. Again, safety is the key. Remember that word and what those letters represent and your roundabout driving experience will be a smooth one. Thanks for your support. Welcome back to Beyond the Badge. We are now here with Mary Ann Radley, who is the sexual assault uh, victim advocate for REACH Counseling Services. And welcome back to Hi. the show, Mary Thanks, Joe. Thank you for coming back to the show. And uh, some viewers and listeners might not know you. Uh, <laughs> please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, no problem. Um, well, like you said, I'm the sexual assault victim advocate at REACH Counseling. I have a master's in counseling. I've been at REACH for about five years now um, mm -hmm. in the role of victim advocate. I'm from the Oshkosh area. Excellent, excellent. Well, once again, thank you for coming on today's show. And uh, Tell us about REACH Counseling Services, you know, and the programs that you provide. Sure. Uh, we actually do have um, quite a diverse array of programs, which are really great. Uh, you heard a lot about Nicole's anti-trafficking program and the work she does with women um, throughout her program. Um, but we have a pretty diverse advocacy program as a whole. Um, I work with the general population in Winnebago County, helping victims with crisis intervention, medical advocacy at the hospitals, legal advocacy, so helping victims throughout the court process, helping them navigate the legal system and supporting them throughout that way. Uh, we collaborate closely with law enforcement and district attorneys in that process. And we have a Native American advocate and a Latina advocate who work very closely with their communities in this area to provide culturally competent services and make it more likely that people will be able to reach out and receive services that um, are accessible to them. We have a UW Oshkosh campus advocate, um, Katie, who's housed down on campus here, who works with students, faculty, and staff, does a lot of the same work. 
and then of course Nicole. We have a counseling program. We specialize in treating trauma that is a result of abuse, um, mostly uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and um, we'll see kids, teens, and adults. We have a education program, so our prevention educators are out in the schools giving presentations to little ones all the way through high school age on different age appropriate topics regarding sexual abuse. And we also have an offender program. So after offenders are released from the prison system, usually we'll work with the Department of Corrections for referrals in getting um, offenders to be in our treatment program. Oh. Excellent information yeah. for those that are maybe victims. Yes. Absolutely. And what should people know about sexual abuse and assault? Sure. So unfortunately, sexual abuse and assault, I think, happen a lot more than people really want to believe happens in our community. Um, we live in a pretty small area, pretty friendly community, um, but unfortunately, we're not immune to these types of issues. So I think what's important to keep in mind is that there's a lot of myths out there about what sexual assault looks like. And you know, when you think about it, you maybe think, stranger hiding in the alley, um, brutal attack on an innocent by or an innocent victim just walking down the street. Unfortunately, we know that that does happen, but I would say 95% of the time it's by somebody you know. So somebody you are an acquaintance with, someone you've known for a long time, it's most often always someone that the victim knows that and know. trusts. That yeah. And uh, I think as Nicole was saying, it's the grooming the type The grooming, thing. sure. Yeah. Of course, we see that with little kids a lot. Yeah. So that's most often when it's um, somebody you know, it's somebody that um, a perpetrator has, like Nicole said, picked up on vulnerabilities of a child. So um, the perpetrator knows that the child won't tell if they do this to them or they can keep them silent pretty easily. And so unfortunately, it's really hard for the little ones to come forward. Um, yeah. But we do have a child therapist who sees kids um, yeah. between four and 12. Excellent. to make those services That's accessible excellent. for them, yeah. So who is affected by sexual violence and how prevalent is it in mm -hmm. our area? Mm -hmm. um, pretty prevalent, you know, not any more or less, I would say, than other areas across the state or our country. Uh, statistics typically say that one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused by the time they're 18. Those are national statistics um, and statewide statistics. In fact, we know that in Winnebago County, they are skewed a little bit higher. Um, we see one in three girls and one in four boys, one in five boys, I'm sorry. Um, but we like to put a positive spin on that and think, you know, with all the work that we're doing at REACH and all the work we're doing to make it, make it more, um, comfortable for victims to come forward, that that's why we're seeing these higher numbers. It's not that okay. it's happening at a higher rate, but we truly think that we're providing really great services to the community and encouraging more folks to come forward. So yeah. those are alarming numbers, um, but we do have a lot of really great programs in place to help victims. That's excellent, excellent. It's a place where people can actually go yes. and feel comfortable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what, do, what does REACH do for students in, mm -hmm. uh, in the school district? Sure, so like I mentioned, we have a prevention education program and we have our prevention educator, um, our team leader, and she has a few interns that truly go out into just about every single school in Winnebago County, um, in Oshkosh and Nina, Winnebago County, Amro, and do age appropriate presentations to whatever age group they're talking to. So with the little ones, it's more on protective behaviors, warning signs, um, who can I talk to if a bad thing happens to me? And then as you get older, you talk a little bit more about sexual assault and consent and what those healthy relationships look like when you're getting older and starting to date. So they work very closely with the counselors within the schools and um, they do get quite a few disclosures actually. Wow. I believe, you know, last year, I wanna say it was over 100 disclosures that they received from uh, little ones, from teens after mm -hmm. they gave their presentations when maybe the kids stepped back and said, well, this is happening to me and now I know that that's wrong and I can tell somebody sure. and get help. Sure, well, and how does REACH work with, uh, with law enforcement in the county? Yeah, so we actually, um, as advocates uh, within the advocacy program, we work pretty closely with law enforcement agencies. Uh, Nicole talked a little bit about how she's working with law enforcement when a woman has been arrested on a prostitution charge. Instead of treating her as a criminal, we are now focusing more on rehabilitation. So that's where Nicole's program comes in, and she's been doing a lot of really great work um, with yeah. Oshkosh Police um, and throughout the county. Um, the other advocates also work with law enforcement. We most often will be present at the hospital with a victim when she's getting her uh, forensic exam done. Law enforcement is very often there to collect the kit, to take a statement. We'll also go to the police departments when a victim comes in to give a statement as well. So just to be there, um, provide some emotional support. You know, the 
the law enforcement officer and the victim advocate have very different roles, but we work together very well in um, just providing support and ongoing resources and support for the victim too. So our role doesn't end with with that person after the report is done. We yeah. can continue working with them sometimes for a couple of years after that initial statement. Yeah. At least, they, at least you're there for them. Yes, and, exactly. And we can and continue absolutely. that work. And uh, how can people become involved in REACH Counseling Services? Sure. Well, there are several ways that folks can get involved um, if they're interested in volunteering. I um, am also the volunteer coordinator at REACH, so I have a few different opportunities I train for. One of them, and the most common one I train for, is volunteer victim advocate. So what that entails is being trained uh, to respond to law enforcement, um, to the hospitals, and to phone calls from victims just to provide that emotional support basically when REACH is closed. So me and my team of advocates will do the crisis intervention, the response things during the day, but I have a team of really great volunteers who will provide on-call crisis intervention, emotional support after hours, so nights and weekends. There's also opportunities to get involved with outreach, special events, office assistant, uh, things like that. Very good, yeah. very good. And uh, talking about special events, yes. uh, what kind of special events do you have? Yes, well, I'm glad you asked. Um, yep. We have our annual fundraiser, Just Desserts. We have it every year around April. Um, this year, it's actually on Friday, May 2nd. Okay. It's our major fundraiser of the year. We have about maybe 12 different vendors from around the valley come in and bring desserts. So if you like sweets, this is definitely the place yeah. to come. <laughs> um, we have 12 vendors that bring their own desserts, homemade, um, lots of local vendors, and then of course silent and live auctions. So lots of really exciting items again this year. Um, and again, that's Friday, May 2nd. Friday, if people May 2nd. Come. Yes. What, what time does that start? 6.30 p.m. And if you're interested in tickets, um, people can call the office and you know just reserve a ticket or of course buy one at the door. Okay, very good. And to get tickets and or get uh, you know counseling services yes. or report things, yes. where would they call? You can call 722-8150 um, mm -hmm. or 426-1460. Either one of those numbers will ring to the same office. Very good, very good. Well, thank you very much of course, Marianne, thank for coming you. back to today's show. And uh, we'll be right back after this short break. Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. Whether you ride a bike or drive a car, you must yield the right-of-way to pedestrians at marked and unmarked crosswalks. At intersections, always look for pedestrians before making a turn and slow down in school zones and neighborhoods to keep our kids safe. Share and be aware, we're all responsible. Hi, welcome back to Beyond the Badge. Uh, we forgot to mention one important event occurring and Mary Ann would like to uh, let you know about that. Sure, well, um, Joe, like you mentioned, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, so mm -hmm. we're always looking for ways to get involved with the community, raise a little bit more awareness throughout the month of April. We are going to have a display at the Oshkosh Public Library, as well as the Menasha Public Library that folks can come in and look at, learn a little bit more. Um, we're also really excited that Cherry Berry in Oshkosh here on Murdoch, mm -hmm. um, Jackson and Murdoch, has offered to donate 10% of the proceeds to reach between the hours of 5 and 9 p.m. on April 3rd and April 24th. So okay. if people come in um, between those hours on those dates, REACH will get a little bit of the proceeds. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at Cherry Berry, okay. And just desserts, don't forget about that one. That would probably be like my sweets. favorite event, <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> uh, so Marianne, thank you again for thank being you. on today's show. And for more information on the Oshkosh Police Department, please check out our website at www.oshkoshpd.com. 
uh, for replay times and watching Beyond the Badge again, you can check streaming video at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. Don't forget about this year's Crime Stoppers Golf Tournament, and I hope, Marianne, I hope you get a team together this year. It's scheduled for Saturday, May 17th, 2014, beginning at noon at the Utica Golf Club in Oshkosh. Uh, for more information, please go to the Winnebago County Crime Stoppers website at www.winnebagocrimestoppers.org and you can register there and get more information. We thank you again for watching and listening to us on Beyond the Badge. Please remember as the weather gets warmer, okay, there's more criminal activity. So we're reminding you once again, please lock your doors, take valuables from your vehicles because Thieves are out there, and as the weather warms, they'll come out and they will take things from your vehicle if you give them the opportunity. Remember also to start a neighborhood watch because it's very important that neighborhood watch is in your community. Neighbors will call the police if they do see uh, suspicious activity, and police will come as soon as they can. So if you need to, con uh, if you need to contact me, 236-5742. If you wish to start a neighborhood watch and until next time from all of us here at beyond the badge stay safe